this video I'm going to do for Game Time 375. I don't know if I really understood exactly uh, what um, this person would like me to share about Sparky's Habitat, so I'm just going to try to add some things that I haven't, hopefully haven't already mentioned. And one of them I don't think I've mentioned is about, I put, this is a terracotta tile that's down. It's a, just a square tile like I have around the edges of this terrarium. So I have this. This kind of helps because like if you set, uh, if you sink the water dish down in dirt, you're going to have nothing but dirt on the bottom. And this helps somewhat. You know, there's not as much dirt on the bottom of Sparky's um, water dish. So I just fit that down, and um, one thing you want to make sure of is that you don't want the rocks right, you know, where there's just a tiny little bit of a space. Uh, now, me just doing that much, Sparky's coming running, uh, because he's got to know what on earth I'm doing, because it really bugs him if I'm messing around in his... Uh, uh, terrarium. He's got to see what's going on. So he's going to, I just put the dish in there, just changed it, and there's no water in it. So I'm going to stop this and get him some okay, water. Okay, I've got his water now, and um, he is really concerned what I'm up to. So I will try to uh, proceed. Uh, I just want to mention the reason for the rocks around the water dish. It, um, a lot of times, um, Sparky, Sparky mostly goes in the water, goes to the bathroom in the water, but sometimes he'll go in the rock, and every now and then, you know, you want to check the substrate for uh, any bowel movements in the substrate and clean it up uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but um, this, this pen really stays uh, pretty clean, and I don't see very many times that Sparky goes in the substrate. So anyhow, um, the, a couple things that I'm going to mention. One is the the bed of beast. Now this is what they look like. Uh, the bed of beast or the eco earth. This is called eco earth. It's really the same thing. I'm doing this with one hand. It's just a block. There's three blocks in here of compressed coconut fiber. And you put it in water. It says the directions on there of how many quarts of water per brick that you soak uh, for, I forget whether it's 20 minutes or whatever. Um, but also, I want to mention about this long fiber sphagnum moss. And this is the way it looks, but it's got these pieces, long pieces of stuff in it. And you really uh, want to take those out. You don't want to poke them themselves with that. Um, but this is what it looks like. I don't use it all that often because I no sooner put it in than the critters that's in the habitat. It just disappears, just like the leaves. But the leaves are a lot less expensive to replace because you just uh, gather the leaves when they're dry in the fall and uh, put them in plastic bags and, and keep them and add them to uh, the um, eco-earth. And that's what Sparky has. And, and over time, then it will um, break down. The leaves will be eaten by the critters. And you really are going to end up with pretty rich soil, and the plants just grow like the dickens. So, um, I'm going to pan over here at this far end and show you how these spider plants can just basically take over the pen. And I have to keep removing them, the larger ones, but I'm just going to leave this be over here uh, through this the rest of this winter uh, because see you can miss the plants and water them and help to keep up the humidity so see what happens you end up you have a whole lot of new plants and then all you do is cut this off of this string see how you have it here and here you just cut that off and you got yourself another plant to stick it right in the soil uh, and Sparky's he's coming to investigate again, uh, wondering what I am doing. And he's going in that log. Um, now, I have two 
of these habitat logs. And these are the extra large ones, but when you have a large habitat, this is the size for just a regular box turtle. When you get a smaller than extra large, uh, they barely can fit in uh, the log. So Sparky is on through the other side and coming out this side and checking things out, aren't you? It's kind of dark over on this side. Her, all the lighting is over on the other side. Uh, so anyhow, um, here I have two uh, more of these spider plants. And I spaced them. So Sparky has an area where he can go in through there. And then I have a little piece of... Um, I guess you want to say driftwood or whatever, just a piece of, of wood there. And then I have another habitat log, and I have a little rock there because Sparky is habit, handicapped, and that way he can crawl up on the log. Um, so I'm going to stop this and go here to the other this side. This rock here, I have a heat source um, near it at one of the emitters that I've shown on another uh, video and that really is warm it, it's around usually around 90 um, it's just warm to the touch just barely and that's Sparky's heat a source you know if he wants to get a little extra toasty and he'll sit on that every once in a while so every time I get an, a new batch of uh, celery, I just cut about an inch off the bottom and it'll grow a little greenery on the top and the um, little critters, boy, they just munch, munch down on it. Uh, this here has pretty well been it's looking pretty sick, but I just keep adding new um, of this the base part of the celery and boy the little uh, roly polies and sow bugs they really enjoy that now this here um, is a little piece of the um, cuddle bone and um, that's you know for calcium I have never once seen Sparky I don't believe ever eaten eat any of that. Uh, it's got like this hard part and you really should try to get all of that off. I don't have all of this off of the back. I've got some of it off but Sparky never, I've never seen Sparky eat on it but yet I see something has eaten on this. So it may be, um, Sparky may have taking some bites out of here or it may be the super worm beetles eating off of that I, I really don't know but there is some chunks taken out so anyhow on this this side here um I just have rocks where Sparky will come up and hang out on all the way across here and then all along the edge is these terracotta tiles that's been cut in half and that kind of helps to keep the substrate from going out between the glass. Um, so, uh, I, I guess that's about it. Um, oh, one more thing um, I'd like to mention is if you get these out, these um, outlets. I can't think what they're called. Electrical where you plug in your uh, lights and all. See how this is here? Um, it's a three prong. Now there's by having the prong in my hands, I'm going to have to stop and clean my hands. Okay, when you buy these power strips, electrical power strips, you really want to be sure when you have a lot of lights, you, when you have a lot of um, emitters and all to plug in to, to these strips, uh, these electrical strips, you want to make sure that, see how the three prong is. You have the two here and then you have the other, the third prong here. So that when you are plugging these in, you've got that space there between because you have them positioned 
uh, that, that that hole, you have the two holes and then the one hole positioned right where you don't have them sandwiched too close together. Now I'm going to show you the other Okay, one. this is what you don't want. Now you see the different positioning of the um, three prong. Instead of having the third hole going the direction sideways, you have it uh, this way. It's really hard for me to really describe what I'm saying, but the point is when it's when it's set up like this and there's not that space and you try to put the plug in side by side then it's really hard and these are so hard to plug them in um, to to plug the um, plug into this type of a setup I mean they're just a, a big fat nuisance so I guess that's it and Sparky don't normally even come over to this side but he's just He's just gone into, I guess, into hiding over on this side that is like a green heaven over here.